Before we get into the video proper right here, I just want to say, Shad, if you happen to be watching this, just know this, I actually really do like your channel, and you help to inspire some of the stuff that I've done in my own books. However, I got the feeling that you're not going to be happy with some of the stuff that I say here in this video. So, if you do wish to reply to the things I have to say right here, what I would like for you to actually do is this. Read and review one of my own books. Let's compare novice author to novice author. If you wish to make things fair, you can judge my very first book... The Sandwich Desperados. Or, if you wish to judge my first novel, you can read Knights of Halley Cruise, read it and review it. Or, if you wish to really dig into me, then you can go ahead and you can try to come after my best book thus far, Bleed, Steam, and Steel. Your choice. Now, let's get on with the video. I have just finished reading Shadow of the Conqueror by Shad Brooks, also known as Shadiversity, and oh boy, do I have thoughts. Do I have a review for you, and some do's and don'ts for your own books. Hi there everyone, Lars here from Camille's Harem, not just a podcast by novice writers for novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers, because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And I will not bury the lead right here, I am going to tell you right off the bat, what I rate this book. It is a 3 out of 5 stars for me, and if you catch me on a particularly bad day, it would be 2 out of 5 stars. Oh boy, I was actually very excited to read this book. Even though, if you've seen my video tearing into Shad's opinion on AI art, I was very excited to see what he could do as an independent creator, as a, as a novice author, because he's had some really good insights into various stories and things that people have gotten wrong. His breakdowns of the Wheel of Time are really on point, are excellent, so I was hoping that when left to his own devices that he could come up with something really cool, something that would just pull me on in, and oh boy, nope. Before I dive any further into my breakdown of what went wrong with this book, let me just point out right here that it's very hard to recreate Dalen the Conqueror in Elden Ring because you can't give uh, your good boys uh, really good solid blue hair. But in any case, I decided to mix up my character a little bit right here, dress him up as Dalen, so that way you get some Dalen stabbing and slashing stuff whilst I punch scientificate about everything that just happened to go wrong with this book. So, first off, if you have no idea about this book whatsoever, here's a very, very brief breakdown of the plot. You have Dalen, once known as Dalus the Conqueror, who almost conquered the entire world of uh, Talos, which really isn't too hard considering that's basically magical Australia. <laughs> So it's not necessarily that big, but hey, whatever. He nearly conquered the entire world, but just before he managed to reach his apex of where everyone was bowing before his feet, he was overthrown. He went into hiding, and now as an old man, he's going to pay for all of his sins by committing suicide. However, the by the means by which he does commit suicide, throwing himself off of the edge of the world, holding two stones that are going to burn up his soul and send him into outer darkness. As he falls through the world, he ends up becoming young. But not only young, he is endowed with amazing powers of the light that allow him to be a superhero. What is this young man now going to do now that he's been given a second shot at life? He is going to go on a redemption quest. He is going to redeem his soul of all the horrible things he has done and then proceeds to do all these horrible things as a result. <laughs> that is basically the plot right there. Now then, there are other characters. There's Lyra, there is Eric, and there is Cusick, who are the other somewhat main characters. They're really actually just side characters who are there to help move aspects of the plot along. Lyra used to be one of the concubines slash victims of Dalen when he was Dalus the Conqueror and had a and had a ever-revolving door of young women who he used and abused. Eric is the man who overthrew him at the height of his power, and Cusack is an exiled man who has joined this holy order of Ark Knights and is actually doing a lot of really horrible things to other people, as you find out later on. This was billed to me as a redemption story, and I'm just going to say, myself as an author, I love the concept of redemption. 
in a lot of my books, not in all of them, but in a lot of my books, there is an aspect of a character who is trying to redeem themselves in some kind of way, either because they made a horrible mistake and they're trying to redeem themselves from the consequences and bad reputation of that mistake. I even have some villains who are trying to justify what they've done or try to get themselves back on the right path. And then, especially if you've read my Legend of the Ten Lords series, you will have seen one particular character, Bob the Virus, who in many ways could actually be a good comparison to Dalen. And I will actually fall back on that numerous times here in my review because there were some similarities between these two characters. And yet, to, not just to toot my own horn, but quite honestly, I feel like I succeeded a whole lot better with Bob the Virus in just three books of getting him as a side character than Shad was able to do with the whole book and Dalen being the main character. Now, I will be honest, as I started reading throughout the book, yeah, I saw a lot of the things that a lot of people really didn't like with the constant monologuing, Dalen has a horrible personality, and there's a lot of uncomfortable references to sexual assault and stuff like that, but again, I was strapped in for a redemption story, and about halfway through the book, I was like, hey, I'm here for the ride, I'm here for the ride, I want to see what you can do, I've got faith that you can do it, you still have half of a book! And then halfway through the book, it all started falling apart. Oh boy, if you had asked me, if you had asked me what my review would have been before I finished the halfway point of the book, I would have said, yeah, four out of five stars. It's This book is very clearly a first novel for a novice author. And that's totally fine. That is actually very fine. Your first book is going to suck, no matter what you do. <laughs> Unless you have an army of very good editors there to help you out. And an army of really excellent beta readers there to help you out make the most of your book. If you're just a novice author with, with limited resources, there's really only so much that you can do, especially if you don't take critical feedback from the people that you do share your book with. And you can see that here in this story. You can see that Shad maybe didn't take the feedback that he should have, or he put it into the wrong place in the book. There are obvious spelling mistakes, highlighting mistakes, uh, various kinds of issues here and there. Ultimately, I do think that it still reads fairly well. The structure of the book is fine. And again, I am all for someone publishing their first novel because there's so much that you can learn by publishing your first novel. And so I have to say, good on Shad for doing that. And also, I'm totally fine with Shad tackling a lot of the really hardcore stuff that he does in his book. Again, I like a good redemption story. And while some people have said, oh, this is fantasy Hitler that he's trying to redeem, not really. If you pay attention to everything that Dalen does and Dalen's history, this is far more like fantasy Genghis Khan meets fantasy Stalin and you merge the two together and then you basically get Dalen or Dalus the Conqueror. So that... The, like, I want to see what you can do to redeem someone who is that awful. If you build me a redemption story, I'm expecting a redemption story. However, a redemption story is not what I got. And no, it's not morally gray when a character cannot truly differentiate between what is good and what is isn't. Oh boy, here we go. Let's dive into the many problems of Shadow of the Conqueror. The first of many problems is a trope that needs to be dissected more, and I would especially love to hear what the people at Overly Sarcastic Productions have to say, especially you, Red. Red, if you happen to be watching any of my videos here, I love you. But another thing, I want to know what you have to think about this trope right here, which I call the interrupting informant. The interrupting informant is is this trope of where the author interrupts the flow of the story to give you important information, but it happens at the wrong time. This is like the younger annoying brother of Purple Prose, where Purple Prose just goes on for way too long, gives you way too much information. You don't need this stuff. The interrupting informant is like, ooh, ooh, I've got something really important, really good to say, and just butts on in into the middle of 
sometimes a really good scene and ruins it by giving you something that you don't need at that time. A really good example is when Dalen goes on to finally commit suicide and it actually is an emotional moment. I was like, I am buying into this. This guy is a horrible human being. He deserves what's happening right here. And yeah, he's a scumbag for trying to go out the way that he is without really letting the world bring justice down upon his head. But I've gotten to know him. I understand him. And this is actually a very powerful moment where he realizes, I am awful. If I could do it all over again, I, I would. But I can't. And it's it's honestly an impactful moment. Then what happens? Shad interrupts this beautiful moment by then telling you why the sun is stuck at a certain angle. I get that it's important because you live in this in this fantasy Australia where the sun almost never sets, and when the sun does set, monsters come out to fight. That is a cool aspect. You should have had that at a different point in the book, not at this highly emotional moment. And it happens again and again and again and again and again and again. And I know I keep saying that, but it happens so often and usually at very important moments where he pauses the action, pauses the emotion, pauses great character moments in order to tell you information that you don't need then. Urgh. And then let me tackle another trope right here, the Mary Sue. Oh boy, I know that Shad immediately jumps to the defenses. He waves about his sword and his shield and he's like, No, I did not write a Mary Sue character, to which I will respond to you, Shad. And I'm going to respond using the best breakdown of Mary Sue characters, which is overly sarcastic trope talk about the Mary Sue archetype. Here's the thing. To Shad's credit, yes, Dalen grew as an individual. He was someone who went through a character archetype arc, a villainous character arc, he is someone who gained experience in all of that, and we actually get glimpses of that through the chapter headings of the book. The Dalen of the past, of the distant past, where we get to see how he became a villain, is a very interesting character, and that character, as far as we can tell from the chapter headings, was not a Mary Sue. The Dalen with whom we spend most of our time is absolutely a Mary Sue, or more importantly, a jerk Sue. And to explain that, I'm going to have Red say it in her own words. Now this was the Gen 1 Mary Sue, the original shameless girls just want to have fun fake insert. And honestly, I'm not going to complain about her, but Gen 1 Mary Sue understandably got a lot of backlash. She was accused of being too perfect, too flawless, too good, of stealing the spotlight from the real heroes, which are all understandable complaints. But this gave rise to the second generation of Mary Sues, where some subdivision happened. See, those criticisms landed. People wanted to avoid the scorn that came with writing a Mary Sue, so service attempts were made to change these characters in ways that violated the Gen 1 complaints. This character can't be a Mary Sue, see, she's not perfect because she's actually a huge asshole. This one can't be a Mary Sue because he's the villain. This one's not an original character, they're repurposed from the original source material, so they can't possibly be a Mary Sue. Now this gave rise to the substrains of Jerk Sue, Villain Sue, and Possession Sue, respectively. The Jerk Sue would be a colossal dickhead, but everyone they cared about would love them anyway. Now there are a ton of other Gen 2 strains, but they all have one thing in common. The story still only exists to serve the image of the character, just like it did the Gen 1 Sue. No matter the skin, the Mary Sue makes the story boring around them. Dalen firmly falls into the jerk Sue archetype, where, yeah, sure, they're an awful person, but yet still the plot, and more specifically, the characters bend to this character's will in order to let things happen for the benefit of said character. The only time that Dalen loses as as older Dalen or as rejuvenated Dalen is when he decides to do the one honorable thing and power down so that way he can have an honorable duel against Eric and Eric manages to defeat him. And then Eric completes his character arc then by deciding to spare Dalen and give him another shot at life. The reason though why that moment actually does not hit well is because while Eric forgives him, Eric is like, you are now totally innocent of all things you have done. You are a changed man. No, you're not. Dalen, young rejuvenated Dalen, has been a horrible person to all these other people. He continues to abuse and manipulate his victims. The guy is proud of assaulting, raping, and impregnating women because he's like, look at the amazing children that they've had, and I helped to make that. What? 
what? When I read that, I was like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. Put this guy back onto the chopping block for crying out loud. Even when we get into his head, his head is an awful place to be in. And I am saying that as someone who, again, if you've read my stories, if you've read any of the POVs from Gary in the Legend of the Ten Lords, or you've read into the POV of Bob the Virus... Those are some despicable characters. And when I'm shocked by what I'm reading, you know that this is bad. And this is not that a morally great character, but a villainous character. But because he's supposed to be on a redemption story, he's not a villain, Sue, which would make him way more interesting. No, he's just a jerk, Sue, who is awful to everyone and gets away with it because he is the protagonist and everything bends to his flippin' will. And the worst part of this, the worst part, the thing that made me absolutely roll my eyes was not the halfway point. I'm going to get to why the halfway point was so bad, but when Shad gives him a dark messiah moment for crying out loud. This is a moment where a lot of other people who've reviewed the book are all like, so he just apparently dies at one point and comes back to life, showing that death has no hold over him. Au contraire, that's not the uh, that's not the point of that scene. When he dies, he dies because he's overwhelmed by the grief of everything that he has done. By enhancing his memory, using the powers of the light, Dalen is able to relive his entire life, and his life absolutely kills him. This time, he's not committing suicide. He's not doing it purposefully. He is having to reconcile with everything that he did and who he is. This could have been a very powerful moment, except for the fact that when he comes back to life, life even though he somewhat changes, he, he goes right back to experimenting with his powers and being a jerk to other people and justifying all of the awfulness that he has done. And the crowning achievement to it is when the world decides to let him off to punish him, quote unquote, to a lifetime of servitude because he did something heroic by helping to save one city. This right here would be the equivalent of when during the Nuremberg trials, if Hermann Göring had somehow stopped the farmer buyings of Dresden or somehow reverted the destruction of Pearl Harbor and the Allies said, you know what, sure, 12 million plus people killed in the Holocaust, plus tens of other millions of people murdered in combat and horrible things, all because of you horrible people. But you know what, Hamon? Because you saved one city, you're good. We're just going to give you lifetime in prison and with a chance of parole, maybe. That's basically what's given to Dalen. And even though he's like, oh, the worst thing you could ever do to me is let me live. No! Not when in the story itself is... It is confirmed that there is such a place as outer darkness, the utter destruction of the soul, or more likely, not that your soul is destroyed, but that you are consigned to eternal torment. That is what Dalen deserves, and yet that is not what he is given. That is is stupid that, and it's and it's hinted at at the end of the book that he's going to continue to go on accrue powers gain notoriety become the hero of the people that's not what this man deserves that's what this man gets because he is the jerk sue protagonist and i hate jerk sues i can actually put up with mary sues because sometimes they're funny and villain sues are actually really entertaining to read. Jerk sues are awful because they remain a jerk, they stay a jerk, they will always ever be a jerk, and yet everything good happens to them when it needs to happen, and it sucks because they never deserve any of the good stuff that comes their way. Now, let's talk about the middle point of the book, because this is where everything fell apart for me. I was buckled in for the ride and more or less enjoying myself. Like I said, I would have given this book four out of five stars before finishing the middle part of this book. Here's one of the things that you need to know about this book. It has no real plot other than the supposed redemption story for Dalen, which the redemption never actually happens. Shad tells you it happens because he's playing up to that this is a jerk suit. He just gets it because it's what he deserves as the protagonist. But no, he never earns it, therefore the redemption never actually happens. Instead, in this book, what you have is you have an and then, and then, and then. So he goes to kill himself, but then he comes back to life. And then he goes to this farmhouse where he gets to meet these people, and we have conversations that don't really mean anything and then he goes and he meets Eric and they have all these kind of philosophical discussions and he completely verbally abuses Eric but that's okay because Eric's a nice guy and then they decide that they're going to go and they're going to forge
forge papers, and then they go to this other place, and then they and then uh, he decides to deal out justice, murdering a bunch of people, and then he decides to commandeer the ship to then go and find uh, sky pirates, and then he fights those spy pirates, and then he meets up with the Ark Knights, and then he goes and does this. There is no plot. It's just and then and then and then and then and then. It's about as annoying as the interrupting informant trope, which is constantly being used. So, in the midst of all of this muddled mess, when Dalen and Eric are going on this ship ride underneath the floating continent of Talos, and they meet the Sky Pirates, he wants to just basically have a fight. Even though he's like, I'm doing a good thing by ridding the world of smugglers and pirates, really, he's just looking to murder people. And lo and behold, when the, spice, when the Space Pirates come, he proceeds to murder them. He's being an awful person, and while, here's the thing, I am not above lots of violence in stories. Again, if you read my own books, you will find lots of violence violence in my epic fantasy stories, and some of it is pretty graphic and brutal. I'm okay with that. Here, though, is the problem. Action must have meaning. You need, if you want to have an excellent battle scene, you need to properly set up said fight, and then there needs to be strong consequences of that fight. In this particular story, the setup for it is not even had within the proper narrative. It's actually to be had in the chapter headings about how Dalen, when he was the conqueror, had all of these women, sired these children, or at least he wasn't supposed to sire any children children and yet here amongst the pirates he meets Blackheart the pirate one of his bastard sons suddenly now Dalen's world should be flipped on its head Dalen murders the cat murders the pirate captain in absolutely brutal form confirming to his bastard son that he is actually his father that was a cool moment. And I was like, yes, this is going to be where suddenly Dalen's going to have a con uh, suddenly have a conflict of consciousness where it's like, oh my gosh, I've sired a bunch of bastards and they could be destroying the world. What if what if some of them are more like me, which he thinks about a hundred chat, a hundred pages later on, not immediately in the moment, nor does he feel awful at I just killed one of my children, which, as we learn in the chapter headings, is what broke him as a man and finally drove him to become a villain when his wife and children were killed in front of him. That was what drove, that's what really made him snap. So well, now imagine this, if you have a guy who's supposed to be on a redemption arc, who is going out, he's all like, I'm going to rid the world by killing evil, ha ha ha, with my great powers, and really we continue to see him being a villain, having to confront his bastard son, who is an excellent swordsman and very capable, and actually stands up to Dalen pretty well. It's a good, intense moment, and wow, I have a bastard son? Oh my gosh, what's happening? And I killed one of my own children? Should have been instant PTSD moment. It should really get him to think, what am I doing? I just did something that turned me into a villain. I'm trying to be a good guy. Oh no, oh no. And really put Dalen into a moment where he has to think about, what have I been doing? What have I done? My legacy upon the world is so awful. If I've been given a second chance, my second chance should be to remove those things that are still around that I have left behind that for a new generation has plagued the world. But because these are my children, what if I could save my children? I can obviously kill them, but but that but that's another me. That's not the me that I want to be. Holy cow, this could have been such a powerful turning moment. What happens? No, I killed one of my bastard sons, whatever. I must have been betrayed by my counselors. They are all horrible people. Let me go now and abuse my new whipping boy, and I'm going to be out totally awesome, kill more pirates, take over a smuggler ship, and I'm going to go save a bunch of girls, and, and Lord over being like, look at me, I'm so cool. Now I'm going to go fight some demons called the Shade and prove myself a hero. While that, yeah, that's some heroic stuff to do by taking on the demons of this world and liberating enslaved individuals, that's all really cool, but if there is no conflict of conscience, and if there are no long-lasting negative consequences for what this man has done, then what was the point? And this is, again, why I say that he is a jerk Sue archetype. Because of the consequences from this epic fight, 
Only the good stuff sticks. He does not change to be a better person because of this fight, nor is he conflicted, nor are there any negative repercussions. In fact, everyone afterwards is like, thank you, you're such a great hero. You absolutely did the right thing. And everyone just agrees with him that he's a good guy. And his conflict of consciousness only really comes in then when a girl, one of the girls throws herself at him and he then has a traumatic moment, which again, could have been good. It could have actually compounded with his guilt but it doesn't. He just moves on. And then when he has a chance to reconcile with Lyra, one of his one of his victims, he proceeds to emotionally and mentally abuse a manipulator. This guy is a monster. And no, he doesn't try to change at all all that is why this is not a redemption story so for the main character he's a scumbag he remains a scumbag he is a jerk who gets whatever he wants and no negative repercussions ever stick not even the ending the ending is actually a good ending for him despite the fact he's like oh the worst thing you could ever do to me is let me live and yet the guy never never lets himself die and at this point he's so op that he can't can't die no matter what and while he might consider that to be a to, to be a curse we know based on the lore of this world that there's a far worse fate l waiting for him on the other side of the veil of death so no he continues to escape and be all good jolly and happy and he's going to be the hero of the world despite the fact that he does not deserve it so if the main character is is garbage and if there really is no plot and the premise is a lie what else is there to make this interesting Lars why on earth would you then give this a three out of five stars well despite the fact that Lyra is also a very useless character completely inconsistent in any kind of way and it's fine to have contradictory characters because people are contradictory themselves they say one thing and then we'll do another that happens all the time, and it can be interesting to write those characters. But Lyra is so inconsistent to the point that it becomes aggravating, and she is a massive hypocrite, and she herself does not change. And while Cuseg seems to be a really interesting guy at first, the moment when you realize that he has been seducing women so that way he can brand them and make them be ashamed as he is because he was exiled for his people by sleep because he was slept around, that's awful! That is not a good guy at all! I kind of liked you! Eric is the only person of any sort of decency in the entire story. And again, this is where the jerk soonest comes on out when it comes to Dalen because Eric is very intelligent. He is very capable. He has all these connections. And and yet, and yet, despite this guy being so cool and awesome, he is conveniently stupid each and every time he's around Dalen. All of his interactions with Dalen are the most forced nonsense I have read in such a long time. It was so aggravating. I was willing to let it slide at first, but then it just gets worse and worse and worse. The more and more awful stuff Dalen does, and Eric's like, yeah, sure, yeah, that's all fine, that's all good. And at the end, I always knew there was something wrong with you. When? When, Eric? When, 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 did, when did you get... When did, when did we see any of that? Never, because you were written to be conveniently stupid, so that way you wouldn't know that he is the rejuvenated version of your worst enemy. Ugh! The moments where Eric is with someone else other than Dalen are actually amazing moments in the book. It feels like if if this book were written for Eric, this book could have actually been amazing, but it wasn't. And that's the thing is that Shad can actually write some really great conversations between characters, and he can actually do some really interesting world building. He is not incompetent when it comes to writing characters, or I should say, I should say. <sighs> He can write good characters, but he sidelines them because he wants to spend time with his jerk Sue protagonist. And while he can actually write some good action, he always derails his own action by inserting the interrupting informants. So honestly, the reason why I give this book three out of five stars is because this is a first novel. And I feel that for a first time novelist, you need to give them a little bit of room to just be like, okay then, you made some big mistakes but we can improve. And I am saying all of this, even if I'm angry, even if I'm ranting a little bit right here, because, well, I wish that he can improve. I hope that he does improve. And when I read, when I read Shadowbinders uh, from 
uh, Neon and Geeky Sparkles over at Clownfish TV. I was enthralled. I enjoyed the story a whole lot. YouTube creators can be great storytellers. And one of the things I've learned from Geeky and Neon is that they spent a lot of time developing their skills as storytellers, and it shows in what they created. And I'm so excited for the next installment of Shadowbinders. I really, really am. I've even already pre-ordered uh, my copy because I, I'm excited. For Shadow of the Conqueror, I don't know what Shad can do more with this story because he has such a jerk Sue protagonist. I would like to see what he could do maybe with more historical fiction because I feel like that's really where he might shine or with a completely different story somewhere else. Shad shows some promise. Again, he's actually got some good dialogue, he's got some good characters, and he knows his stuff when writing action. The problem is, is that he doesn't know how to write things to make sure that it flows very well. And for that, I think that he really does need to check in with other people and really receive and utilize good feedback. And the last thing I'm going to say on... on on this book really is that one of the big defenses that Shad has for this is that he wanted to write a morally gray character. Let me tell you something about morally gray characters. Morally gray characters are not people who do awful things and then try to justify them. That is what a villain does. A morally gray character is someone who for instance is looking at at the world and says there's a problem and everyone else who's tried to do things the right way haven't been able to solve said problem. I will do the wrong thing in order to solve this problem. And then, yes, that sounds oh, that sounds really dumb, and yet with enough intelligence, with enough charisma, with enough firepower or magic, the hero can make it happen. And we're left to say, you did the right, you were aiming for the right thing, but you did it in the wrong way. Right goal, wrong, wrong reasons, or wrong means. Do the ends justify the means? Very interesting conversation to be had right there. When it comes to Dalen, Dalen is doing everything for his own selfish purposes. There is very, very little that he does except for the very end of the book when he helps to save an entire city that was done at the beginning for the right reason. Everything else that he does is selfishly motivated, even if it does lead to something good. And that is, again, just more of him just being the jerk Sue. Only good things happen, only the good consequences stick, and nothing else. That's lazy, that's bad writing. So Shad needs to go back and really needs to understand what makes a morally gray character. Let me then make my comparison, a real good comparison to Bob the Virus. And a little bit of spoilers for my own series, The Legend of the Ten Lords. Bob the Virus is very much an antagonist. I will leave it up to my readers to decide if he's a villain or not, especially because of all the time that he spends with the heroes. He is someone who does things in just a really disturbing, off-putting manner, he is someone who is definitely not above killing tons of people to get what he wants, and you learn over time that he has a very blood-soaked history. You get to see that both literally and figuratively in various ways. And yet, he is constantly helping out the main character, or one of the main characters, Ben, who is a good guy. He is most definitely a good guy, and yet this antagonist continues to help him out. And we learn from Bob that he's doing this mostly for a selfish purpose, that he says that he is missing something. He's not sure what it is that exactly that he's missing, but he's been promised that if he helps Ben to save the world of Hallicruz and to defeat the rebellious lords that have torn this world apart with their godly powers, that if he helps Ben, he will be rewarded with this thing that is plaguing him. He will finally have that missing piece to his soul. So he's doing this honestly for a selfish reason. However, the things that he does to help out Ben are good though some of the time. Other times, he does horrible things to Ben in order to prove a point. He can be very manipulative himself. He backs Ben into a corner. He tries to trick Ben multiple times. He hurts Ben a lot of the times. And so, as as the, what I hope for my readers is that they look at Bob and they're like, this guy is awful. He does horrible things. 
However, one of the things that sets Bob apart, that makes him a more interesting, true, morally great character, is that, as we get to see throughout the story, for one, he actually has great charisma. He can actually crack a real joke, as opposed to Dalen. I only laugh to two of Dalen's jokes, and there's actually way more times that Shad tries to be humorous with Dalen, and it just doesn't work. Bob the Virus, on the other hand, is a very interesting character who's always trying to make things funny, and as you later on learn... Part of that is because this guy is also going through a lot of anguish. He's trying to bury his own pain, his own fears and insecurities through his humor. And he tries to cover up his own weaknesses by being bombastic and overly powerful. And yet he has very clear chinks in his armor. And as Ben gets to learn more about him, he then realizes this is th this guy, like I can trust him, and he's but he's very dangerous. He's funny, but he's bad. He is helpful but he's selfish. What to make of this ticking time bomb who is helping me out? This is like the worst drunken master that I could possibly have. And because of the things that Bob is able to teach Ben and the way that Bob tries to warn Ben multiple times, you are also yourself being manipulated by other people. And you are acting a little too irrationally on a lot of things. There's a lot of mistakes that Ben makes that Bob tries to tell him, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. But Ben continues to make those mistakes until finally he has to accept Bob was right. I needed to do better. I need to think th these things through better for myself. So Ben changes because of his interactions with Bob. And as you read through the the series Bob himself there's more that's revealed about him and you begin to see some changes and also you get to see how while he might play around with Ben a certain way when he deals with other individuals he shows a different side to himself with Dalen you don't get any of that he is not interesting, he's not conflicted, and he's not doing the right thing for the wrong reasons or doing the wrong thing for the right reasons. He's just being selfish. If there's any way that you could actually characterize Dalen, it would be chaotic evil basically. And here's the thing is that chaotic evil isn't going around trying to find the best ways of to which to punish and torture people. Chaotic evil means that this person is ultimately selfish and will do whatever they want for themselves and usually it will be evil things. And yet sometimes those evil things that they do can lead to good stuff. That's what happens when you play D&D &D, and that's kind of what was being done here with Dalen except yet again it was set up that Dalen's supposed to go on a redemption arc, but he never takes that journey. He is never actually redeemed in the story, and as such, the premise is a lie. And when the premise is a lie, you hope then that either the characters or the plot could carry you through, but there is no real plot to the story. It's just then a bunch of things strung together to get Dalen from point A to point Z, and he himself is a despicable character with no character growth beyond what his older self had, which you can only read in the chapter headings. So when we get a glimpse of a more deep, more interesting character, the rest is just this jerk Sue pulling everyone along and devouring them for his own ends so that way he can feel better, which is the last line of the book that he finally smiles and thinks that he can finally be a better person. No, nothing in the book suggests that even remotely because anytime that he does do anything good he does 10 things wrong completely contradicting himself it's like taking one step forward and then 10 steps back as a result this is not a redemption story but a continuation of a villainous arc but he's not even a good villain he's just a jerk so what can we learn about about writing from what we have right here with shadow of the conqueror again i stand by what i've said before if you want to publish your very first novel go ahead and do that i think that that can be really good and really beneficial for you plus like i always say you need your stories your stories need you and the world needs your stories I do firmly believe that Shadow of the Conqueror is a book that deserves to exist, and I think that's a book that we can learn something from. I think that's a book that actually has connected with some people, and as Shad has tried to point out, look at all these amazing reviews I've gotten, I think that there are people who do genuinely like his story for what it is. However, if you're looking for good epic fantasy, this isn't it. Uh, may I suggest that you go and read something from Brandon Sanderson or Robert Jordan, and even though I tear all the time into George R. Martin, George R. Martin wrote things better than what Shad did in Shadow of the Conqueror. But some things that I think we can absolutely positively 
we learn from this is this. Number one, if you're going to write a morally gray character, please try to understand what it means to actually have a morally gray character and then execute it properly. Another thing is this, if you end up writing a character who is supposed to gain all these kinds of OP powers, which I'm totally okay with, again, read my series, The Legend of the Ten Lords. I have so many OP characters in that series. It's okay to have OP characters, but please make it where that they have to deal with the consequences of their actions and of their powers. Like, they can't just simply solve everything and get whatever they want, that where everyone just bends to their will and desires. That is a Mary Sue archetype. Mary Sues can be fun to read at some times because it's really hilarious, but a jerk Sue never is. And just as a quick bit of comparison, one of the characters that absolutely broke the five kingdoms for me was jace from oh, the five kingdoms that freaking jerk sue who is a side character the side character is a jerk sue who gets everything he gets the princess at the end and the guy did nothing to deserve it other than constantly being a jerk to everyone and never growing up as a character that ticked me off so much don't write jerk sues Another thing is this, watch out for how you are explaining things within your story. Do not interject information where it is not needed. When a character is having a very emotional moment, do not describe why the sun is at the angle that it's at. Put that in where it's actually needed. Again, a lot of the information that Chad interrupts his own story with is actually pertinent, very valuable information for later on. It just came at the wrong spot. It's like he was writing and suddenly realized, oh, I should have explained something. Let me explain it right here. No, explain it earlier, before the action. And for a guy who loves epic battles and everything, please, 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 if you're going to write a good fight, it needs to be properly set up and then there needs to be good consequences for it. And I know I don't just mean positive, like all the positive stuff that he gave Dalen. I'm talking about consequences that are good because of how they influence the story in both positive and negative ways. Sometimes you lose a battle. So what's going to happen as a result of that? Or sometimes you win the battle, but because you won the battle, you suddenly ticked off someone that you shouldn't have ticked off, and now they're coming for you. Maybe you killed the wrong person. Or maybe, yeah, you saved everyone, you saved the day, good on you, Dalen, but you did kill one of your bastard sons, and whoop de doo suddenly you should be thinking a little bit about what uh, what's going on here. What about all my other bastard children? Are there more? Are they like me? What is my legacy? What can I do to better myself or to better them and to prevent my horrible legacy? from going on into the rest of the world. Hmm, that could have been interesting to see play out. Ugh. Another thing is this. A plot is not just and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. No, a plot is understanding what the goals of the characters are, understanding where the world is going on its own without the characters having to drive it forward. This is where we see the world and the characters evolve together. A plot is making sense of how a character goes from point A to point Z, and that it feels at times like they are in control and at other times that they're not in control, but it still all makes sense and that we can see clearly defined character growth along the way. Please have mile markers in your story, poignant chapters, poignant scenes, poignant conversations that show how characters are changing, whether it be that they're falling in love or realizing that they are need, that they need to come to grips with, with something awful that they did or coming to understand what kinds of powers they've just achieved, even that they've gained and what that actually means, not just for them, but for the world that they live in. There is so much more that could have been done here with this book that wasn't is just it's sloppy and it's all pieced together all held together by a jerk sue so yeah there we go <laughs> i did not intend for this video to actually go for this long but oh boy i really need to get that off of my chest and i'll be honest with you right here there's so many other things I haven't talked about, either because I'm like, look, this is just going to beat a dead horse beyond death, beyond the point of glue making even. We, we just need to keep it succinct. And yes, me keeping it to this length of a video is me actually keeping this succinct because there were so many problems. Again, why three out of five star ratings for this? Well, I liked Eric when he was away from Dalen. I thought there was some very interesting world building here. And also, this is Shad's first novel, so I'm going to give it a pass on certain things and say, look, 
here's really what you need to learn, and we're not going to gripe about all the other small stuff. So with all that being said, if you'd like to have more reviews, analyses, breakdowns, and the likes from Camille's Harem, then please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to this video. If you want to support with the work that we do here, then please check out the books that we ourselves have published. I've made references to my own stories here in this video. Links for them are in the description below. It help us out a whole lot. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining us on this crazy adventure that we call writing. Even if sometimes we have to take someone to task, it's got to be done. And until the next video, y'all, tschüss.